is all about how to weed your orchids. I bet that you were waiting for a video like this, not ever having had to do it or didn't know how to do it, how to go about it. <laughs> Just kidding. Hello. <laughs> it is an Orchid Chores Diary video again, yes, because it is a busy, busy season on the patio for me. Busier than just watering orchids and walking away or watching them grow. And the worst candidates of all, we haven't seen them for a while. I thought, why not do an update with you around, have a little bit of a chin wag about them. Jibber jabber, also known as update in more formal lingo. This is Colmenara Masai Red, an absolute beast of an orchid. Now, don't get me wrong. <laughs> all this could actually stay in the pot because the orchid is that big. But as we're heading into cold climate and, you know, damp and wet, there is an issue that could arise that I can't see if all of this remains in the pot. Unfortunately, it has already established itself to such a degree that <laughs> I, don't, I won't be able to pull out everything with its roots, which is unfortunate because the root network of these ferns, and I don't know what this one's called, I kind of think five fingers, this is maidenhair fern, clearly, which I was never successful in growing, ever. I wanted it as a house plant for the longest time and never managed to do so because, you know, they like a lot of humidity. Lo and behold, it's doing super well with my orchids in self-watering. I got me some roots. Yeah, so anyway, it's going to get cold and damp. And even though the new growths are already way advanced and above the canopy of what I've got going on here, it's not a good idea around the pseudobulbs to not be able to monitor what is going on should the conditions become so bad. So when I get a clump at the base, I do try and get some roots out. They'll be back. <laughs> come spring, summer, they will be back. Not even that long, but for the time being, it was just getting too much. Oh, yay. Dirty hands. I always thought lecker and self-watering was a clean method of growing orchids, but clearly, with things like this happening, <laughs> you get dirty hands. I love the ferns. Promise I don't like chucking them like this and, you know, getting rid of them, but I have to say that I've got so many, <laughs> so many, it's okay to say goodbye to some, knowing full well they'll be back. They'll be back. Anyway, Colmenara Masai Red, true to form, we have four more new growths and I have bought myself some time. Well, the new growths have bought me another year at least before I have to repot her because they're all nicely contained in the pot. And a little bit of light training has also done its job. They're going to go nice and upright. However, <laughs> new growths in 2023, I will have to watch out where they're coming from because that may be a game changer and we may need to reposition the orchids in here because there are two of them. When I got her, I thought I only got one and it turns out throughout the past years of repotting before I put her in this mega big pot, it turns out I've got two in here. So actually, the biggest and most vigorous piece is this one in the back here, and it has three new growths, whereas this piece right here only has one new growth. It's not so bad. If there's enough light, she spikes around January. But if there's enough light in the winter, then we should have approximately eight spikes. And if not, then it'll be what? six maybe. In one year I had seven spikes out of this one. One pseudobulb itself produced three all in its own right. So yeah, beautiful orchid. Love her. Never expected her to grow this big though. So if you're into big oncidiums, get yourself a Maasai Red. The blooms are absolutely stunning. The spikes themselves are something to behold, but know that you need a lot of space for it. That's the reason why she lives outside all year round. I never anticipated to get pseudobulbs that had the size of a big peach. That is the pseudobulb alone. And you can see the growths here. Beautiful. I mean, there's nothing I can say bad about this orchid, especially because it's doing me the favor of 
being able to live outside, tolerate my lowest temperatures of five degrees Celsius so far. Don't want to jinx it. I'll stick with five. That's cold enough. Thank you very much. Because if she couldn't do that, she would not be able to be inside. I don't have the real estate for her, but doing marvelously. And we are going to spritz her with a little bit of, oh, the garlic and alcohol, you know, as a little final touch up, just a little prevention. Nothing going on here, nothing to see, thankfully. No mealybugs that I could discover in the past couple of days. Going over all my orchids on the patio. So there we go. Colmenara must I read has been groomed. I suppose I could fuss a little bit more with this root ball that I can see here. There's a clump of fern. Will you? Oh, there we go. Yeah. Okay. Let's move on to the next one that we haven't seen in a while. Right. I need that space. <laughs> it's a bit crowded out here. <laughs> I'll be right back. This gorgeous specimen is Renanthera fernii. <laughs> There's an orchid in there. You can see my Renanthera in orchid top. This is 2.0 and clearly Renantheras from my experience are very prone to stem rot. Even though this orchid will be moving indoors for the winter, well, and on warm days and sunny days, she'll move outdoors. She's a shuffle candidate. Um, yeah, all these ferns around here with what's coming towards us, mm, that's not going to happen. What I'm trying to do once again is get the root ball out, but I don't want to... Ha, let me just stop the camera here one minute and show you. Just a moment. Yeah, I don't want to do this. Got to be super careful. She's not as robust as the Maasai Red. You see that gorgeous pink thing in there? That is a precious, precious root tip. That's why I'm being uber, uber cautious. And for that reason, I'm not going to be persistent about getting the whole clump out roots and all. I'm just going to go in with the snips and cut the base of that fern off. Very carefully. I don't want to have too much or any media abrasion on that root tip for that matter. But I'm very happy to see it. Okay, that took off everything, including a bit of lava rock. I need to get that. And there it is. Let's cover you up again. As in cover you up. Would, do you mind? Very happy to see this root. Absolutely thrilled. Now, but wait, there's more. We can go around the edge of the orchid top and just yank off what we can see. And there's another cluster in here, a baby cluster. Should come out relatively easily. Well, <laughs> famous last words. So my Renanthera is doing well. Very pleased to see that root tip. There's a root down here. It looks nasty, but it's a really old one and it's still super firm. The reason I'm not taking the saucer out of this orchid top is because I had root tips coming out of it. Ah, oh, what I thought was end of last season, I could see root tips coming out of the base. So I am not removing that saucer. I have no idea of the status of the root tips. I have other ways of cleaning the orchid tops. Now is not the time. I first want to see what I'm working with, dealing with. Lovely jubbly, including roots. And now you can see the root that was visible early in the season. I think I showed it in a video. Oh, it's going down. I was so pleased. That's that one. Let me tell you, they're not fast root growers, these Renantheras. No way. This fern is brand new in here, so I don't understand how it could establish itself so firmly. There we go. So if you have Renanthera, oh, this is Mona Chica, by the way. If you have this one and you live in a very humid climate, the mounting would be the best ideal culture for it especially because of the stem. 
I thought I was safe with my first one. Honestly, with so much wind and warm weather when I'm misting, stem rot never ever occurred to me during those months. And I lost her because of misting during, what, started the spring or something like that. And I was just misting the surface of the pot, you know, like give it a little bit more humidity in my super dry climate. And well, <laughs> I lost her. And there was no saving her, it just went poop, 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 very, very fast. And for that reason, the fern has to go. That looks a little bit better. There we go. We're back to Renanthera monachica in the pot and not Renanthera fernii. <laughs> I have a few others. If you're still here, let's go and have a look at those. The only thing that gives away there's an orchid in here <laughs> is these roots. Look at this. The rest is all weed on my Holcoglossum Kimbiliano. I'll show you what is going on with what I thought would be spikes, but first of all, I want to focus and concentrate on what I need to get done today. But my goodness, this orchid has never bloomed for me. I don't know if it ever will. And that should give you a hint of what is happening further up. <laughs> but this is an extension of the weed that lives behind the hedge close to where this orchid lives throughout the summer in the deep south and it is well well rooted in the only thing i can do here is literally just you know pop off the twigs cut them off i tried a couple of months ago when i saw the little ones growing i thought oh he double hockey sticks no no way but this is a very well rooted in weed so i'm not going to be yanking or pulling at it it's just a question of cutting it away now my Holcoglossum Kimbilianum, lovingly called Kimi, lives outside all year round. So this shouldn't be an issue, but you know, this weed is so vigorous. <laughs> I don't want it to become an issue. And that's why it's got to go. I'm getting some with the roots out. The moss is growing back early in uh, the spring. I had one of those little blackbirds looking for worms and mistook my orchid roots for worms and went into the orchid top, destroyed all the moss. I gotta be careful because I'm against roots, but destroyed all the moss around it, all this covering, what you see here, sorry for the jiggle, as an indentation. That was all removed by this bird, <laughs> thinking it saw worms snaking around the base of the pot and those were my orchid roots so it chomped on those shredded the root tips i mean i would have freaked out more if i had not got an orchid that has plenty of roots but yeah <laughs> that, that bird was in for a rude surprise when <laughs> all it got was organic matter but uh, let me see how we're doing with everything else that's going on at the base. Let's turn her around. Is there something else? Oh, these guys. <laughs> A single seed, always with one leaf. Okay, what is going on here? Check this out. Have I got shrooms going here? What's this? Oh, a beautiful root tip in your face. <laughs> right there. But look at that. Is that Sorry, is that just mushrooms? A form of fungi? It's not hurting my orchid. I'm not sure I like it though. I'm going to leave it and keep observing it. We shall see. And just check this out. You see, this is a beautiful root going down into the saucer. And this looks like a worm to that black bird there. And it came and well, I've got new roots coming, so more trick dinner, trick and treat, <laughs> which is the season, right? More trick and treats coming up for a blackbird in spring. So yeah, now let me get you up a little bit and, sh oh, hang on a second. Nope, that's a root, gotta be careful. Let me get you up and show you what is going on with what I thought was spikes. And I'm still not sure. Oh, there's one more thing I wanted to also groom off, and I'm sorry for all the dirty hands. Hang on a sec. 
This summer of 2022 was the mildest summer I have ever experienced on the Costa del Sol. I'm annoyed. I had one day of 39 degrees Celsius and I thought, way, hey, here we go. Now it's my turn. Let's get hot. No, one day. And in that one day with the misting of how I take care of this orchid, I had a lot of shoots, new little growths coming out at the base of where this orchid was severed and propagated. That one hot day ruined the branch of the offshoot of where it was propagated. The misting water stayed in the crown, as it always does with my Kimmy, and it just got too hot and actually cooked the whole thing. Look, it had even started growing roots, and I'm going to show you a different angle because it grew another growth from the base of this one that failed. See that? There's the one we just cut off also with desiccated roots. But shortly afterwards, as this one was declining, straight away another new growth came out and it's absolutely fine. That was a shocker. I was like, seriously, I've got one day of heat and then burn, burn, burn. Several burns happened on that specific day in my collection. Can you see what I see? The camera is struggling to focus on what I want to show you. Let's see if I can help it out a little bit. Look at this. I thought I was getting spikes. These are keikis, more offshoots. Kimmy is gonna be some kind of a shrub. <laughs> Unless it's got the funkiest spikes, these are keikis. And there's another one down here doing exactly the same thing right here. Leafing out, isn't that bizarre? And the fourth one on top, I'm gonna insert a picture, otherwise we're gonna need a ladder for my tripod. <laughs> Same thing, curly whirly, what I thought was gonna be a spike or two or three or four. No siree, keikis. I'll take it. I mean, you know, I love this orchid. I love the funky growth habit. I'm not gonna hate this orchid for it, but I have to tell you, there was an element of excitement and cartwheels around the patio when I saw these things growing. But now with the leaves coming out, I'm like, yeah, okay. That was my trick. That was not a treat. <laughs> I know we're way too soon for that. I'm sorry. Right, let me get another candidate out and let's have a look at that one. Look at this amazing culture. <laughs> la, 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 la. <laughs> Check out this weed. Loving self-watering. Anyway, this is my Sunya Green, the regular one, not the mailman, the one that actually did bloom. So, update on the mailman. My prosthetic sheath didn't work. We have Bud Blast. Bud Blast in year number four. <clears throat> okay, well, back to the drawing board. Next year, maybe that prosthetic sheath will be placed there <laughs> a little bit sooner. What a bummer, hey? Ah, uh, that orchid. Anyway, that's why I brought out Sunya Green, because not only does she need a good cleanup, but just so that I could fit in the update on the mailman, and I'm getting fern spores all over my hands. It's like touching fine, fine sand. So this fern will be back as well. But the Sunya Green, the regular one, has had a beautiful first time blooming for me the beginning of 2022 was very very welcome <laughs> and now it's got this growth right here this one it's looking marvelous as well so I'm hoping I'm hoping as a consolation prize for the mailman not delivering one more time and again the mailman disappoints but I'm hoping that this one will bloom for us let's say late winter, early spring. That was about the time when this gorgeous chartreuse butter yellow bloom came to be. I already spritzed her with some garlic alcohol. I think I need to get my snips to get that clump out right there, just to prevent her from going back to the shelf without at least having one little misting of eau de pest prevention. You know, perfumes attract, supposedly. <laughs> Garlic alcohol does not. So we have some roots I need to be mindful of. I think I can get the clump without doing damage to the base. I also want to make sure if I see any scale down there, 
and of course it's being obnoxious because but it's right up there by the roots i don't dare go in with snips ah we got some of it <laughs> it appears that the ferns are winning today i can't get a proper grip on them without pulling the layman off removing moss from my brassocatlia amethyst <laughs> I picked off the layman from roots I didn't see were underneath the moss. So I stopped. <laughs> the only thing to do. Okay, that'll be it for now. I don't really see any scale down there, but uh, doesn't mean we can't put some garlic alcohol there to prevent them from coming, right? My eyesight is not that good, to be honest. <laughs> but I can see scale eggs. There's a little one, but I think it's a dead body. Yes, it's a dead body, but that is a warning shot, a warning sign. Keep her protected. Let's see what we've got at the base down here. Now we can remove the lacquer from there. Heading into cold times, heading into cold times. And what's this? Ah, a viable route. Leave it. Righty ho! And back on the shelf she goes. You gotta have some humor in this hobby of ours, don't you think? <laughs> when I painted this smiley face onto this toilet roll, I thought, huh, this doesn't look very promising. This is more of a bemused face. <laughs> Turns out there was some degree of, let's say, premonition in the universe that guided my hand when I did this. <laughs> yeah, this is the Sunya Green Mailman, the named variety. The reason I have two is because <clears throat> this is not what we wanted to see. <clears throat> the reason I have two is because I have always wanted to see what makes a named variety of an orchid different from a non-named variety. And I fell into my personal orchid curiosity trap because who cares? It's a Sunya Green. Why do you care whether it's a mailman and the other one isn't? Well. <laughs> This is the reward I get year in, year out with this orchid. Uh, okay, well, she's healthy and uh, we may get a shot at her in 2023 and see what she does. And now she also gets a little bit of a misting. It's fabulous, fabulous stuff. I have a few more to do, but they are all the ones that we've already seen or have seen a lot of this season. Just thought that this little orchid chores would give us an opportunity to have a little bit of a chin wag on those that we haven't seen for a while. Meanwhile, let's have a look at the base. <laughs> I was about to cut this short, but I wanted to check something. If there's anything wrong at the base, it would be a first time because she just never ever bloomed for me. Anyway. In the past years, there was never a problem with the growth or the base or the size of the growth or the health of the orchid. Nothing. <laughs> and I can't give this orchid more light. She would burn. Stop it, <laughs> that little membrane. <laughs> no, but really, anyway, the growth is fine. The base is fine. Everything is fine, except we have more bud blast once again. Right, now, thank you so very, very much for watching. I appreciate your time. Hope you found this interesting, if not a little bit entertaining. I want to wish you a beautiful day. On one condition though, that you please stay safe. In the meantime, take care. Bye.